Hi, this is Dark Crystal Games, the developers behind Encased RPG. In this video, we will talk about the narrative of Encased and play through a little bit of the game's prologue. Encased is an old-school post-apocalyptic sci-fi RPG featuring turn-based combat. The game is set in an alternate 1970s and revolves around the exploration of the dome a mysterious structure discovered in a remote desert. Exploration and exploitation of the dome is carried out by the Cronus Foundation, a massive organization founded by the world's most powerful governments. The first thing you will do in Encased is to create your character, choosing your avatar's portrait, gender, and appearance. Don't worry, this selection of faces and haircuts is not final. There will be many more options in the final release. What is really important during your character creation is which wing you will choose for your character. As a new recruit, the players must choose one of five wings. Black Wing, Military and Security Forces. White Wing, Scientists, Medics and Researchers. Blue Wing, Engineers and Technicians. Silver Wing, Upper Management. Orange Wing, ex-convicts who have exchanged their prison jumpsuits for the uniforms of a Cronus laborer. The selected wing gives you starting bonuses and lead to interesting possibilities and unique story choices. On selection, the wing applies preset start values we think make sense for a character from this department. But you are free to redistribute these values and create any character you want. Be it a dumb scientist or a white-collar criminal with high scores in brains and looks, it's all up to you. We will talk more about Encased stats and their effects in the next video in the series. You take the envelope handed to you. The Kronos logo stares up at you from it, along with the large number one. You open the envelope. Inside you find a foil-coated postcard depicting a strange glowing mechanism. A second card serves as an official invitation. You receive a second envelope. Inside is a copy of a form you filled out earlier. The third envelope contains another congratulatory postcard and a ticket to Crystal Sands. You won't feel the barrel of a gun in your back here. Your cage is open. The bars are gone. Your temporary pass will open doors for you. Chat with guard. Buy a cold soda. You may even ride the funicular with the others. Just keep your handguns where they can see them. You are no longer just another prisoner in uniform. Now you work for the orange wing. The glass door is closed. The funicular rises from the platform and carries you to the spire. A gentle wind rocks the crowded cabin. At the handrail, your view of the city is obscured by rising heat. The funicular rises on. Frost whitens the windows. It scrapes pale upon the glass. The cabin heating comes on. This is the first time we come upon a stat check in a scripted interaction. If we had been agile enough, we could have found a free seat. If our looks were better, we could have peeked into the cockpit and chatted with the pilots. But in this case, we are only able to use our perception to study the other travelers. You turn to the window and inspect the faces reflected in the frosted glass. Most wear new jumpsuits in the colors of their wing. A couple of silvers wear sharpsuits. Several heavily armed soldiers lounge in battle dress. The cabin emerges from milk-white clouds. The sunlight reflects bright upon the roof of the dome. You shield your eyes. The spire approaches. A moment, and the cabin shudders and docks. The spire. Steady white light floods the station hallway. You feel like you're in outer space or at a busy shopping mall. A clerk at the desk gives you a friendly nod and passes you a fourth envelope, fourth and last. Inside you find your name tag, permanent pass, and a magnetic chip no bigger than an aspirin. On the chip you find engraved the number 38. At capsule 38 you put the chip in the slot. The door opens. You step inside. 
five others have arrived before you. You give them a wave before taking a seat. And the round door closes with a dull clap. The capsule begins its descent, accelerating slowly. This is the moment where we can see how your choice of wing leads to different possibilities and the different relationships between one wing and another. You introduce yourself. The black responds with eyes in her voice. Olofsson, Lieutenant Olofsson. She nods at the unoccupied seat opposite hers. Sit there, keep your hands where I can see them. You move to the window. Beneath the rippling clouds, you spy a golden desert. Pretty as an advertisement, the dunes ripple in pale waves. You think you see patterns. You squint. You were right. Gigantic, concentric circles seem to stay in the sand. A capsule sinks into the clouds. A silver knocks on the viewport. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. These are your last moments in your old world. I advise you to enjoy them. The cabin quivers as if breaking through an invisible barrier. A black lets out a barely audible breath. That's the boundary. There's no going back now. The ground comes up fast. The capsule hits the breaking cushions. The door opens to the desert, flooded with sunlight. An orange transporter stands nearby. A silver adjusts his jumpsuit and narrows his eyes. Attention! You are now entering Kronos territory. Mr. Patanin, Mrs. Kimura, please follow me and pick your seats. Elsa, our reformed employees look uncomfortable. Would you be so kind as to provide them with handcuffs that are more humane? Our orange wing character is assumed to be untrustworthy and must travel in handcuffs. This situation does not come up with the heroes of other wings, and there will be more like it. You put the handcuffs on yourself, snorting as it checks the locks. You take your seat beside the second orange at the back of the transporter, near the barred window. The truck shifts into gear and pulls out. The world under the dome looks like a dream, a great and glorious dream. The transporter pulls out onto a brand new road with freshly painted yellow-white markings. The faraway horizon glows blue-silver as light glints on the edges of the dome. You make yourself comfortable and drop your gaze to the road flowing beneath you. Heat. Sun. The wind playing with an empty red and white striped cap. The transport rolls over the bridge across a wide highway. Vehicles speed by below. Billboards line the road. Street lights burn bright, even in daytime. The car turns off the street down into an underground parking lot. A silver opens the door, and the car is bathed in the yellow light of dozens of lamps. In the far corner of the lot, a spacious elevator awaits you, doors open. When we arrive at Magellan HQ, we must register. But the Silverwing secretary is not fond of ex-convicts. If we were playing a character from another wing, this may have turned out differently. There is a reception desk near the elevator. The admin man in the desk gestures for you to come closer. Seeing your orange uniform, the man can barely hide his disgust. He nods at the chair, wordlessly. The metallic name tag on his chest reads, Dean Rehat. Let's get you registered first, and I'll explain everything. Name and age. Dean impatiently stabs at the terminal's keyboard. You move closer to the desk. Dean's hands freeze over the keyboard and he gives you a nod. You shoulder the administrator away from the computer and enter your information into the database. You type, proceed, and return to your seat. Dean mutters something under his breath and returns to the terminal. 
The silver raises his head and sneers at you again. Into the hallway and then go straight. You'll get your instructions with the briefing. Let's look at this situation from another perspective. If instead we were playing as a new Blackwing character, we could bypass the asshole secretary entirely. Instead, we will use our high-tech skill to hack the public terminal and register ourselves. Here, we can also see the letter that is written specifically for Blackwing employees, which we would not see as a character of any other wing. In Encased, not only stats and wing selection are important, the game provides a lot of possibilities for a player to create a backstory for his character. You sign in. A static disappears and a video starts playing. A bald man with high cheekbones adjusts the camera. Hello, my name is Martin Kingsley. Martin's on-screen image fails to conceal a sneer. I have your profile here, number 6697. Your predecessor retired from the program. I'd like to make sure your appointment wasn't a mistake. Kingsley frowns at you and doesn't answer. The curator scans your file. Your blank page paperwork is missing a few details. For what crime you were sentenced? In this case, for instance, we learn that Cronus has lost some of our files and needs us to clarify a few details. The game takes note of all your replies. The consequences will play out later on, in one way or another. Martin listens to you with a awakened expression, trying not to let his shock show. I'm glad there are no real children under the dome. For a long moment, Kingsley is silent. And recording. Listen, I need you to pass some information to the group leader. Martin squints at the screen. Your destination is C-12, Nashville. I've checked the records and trust me, there is something not right about that place. If we play the same situation with our Blackwing soldier, we have a completely different experience. We are asked to choose a call sign for our fighter, while other wings will have their own mini-stories. Stippling his thin fingers, he contemplates you through the screen. Welcome! My name is Martin Kingsley. I am the curator of this expedition. You are here to take the place of Private Bao Chu, who unexpectedly had to take medical leave. I hope the short notice hasn't caused you any inconvenience. Kingsley squints down at your paperwork. There are a couple of points I wish to clarify. Tell me. What made you want to join the Black Wing? Your answer surprises him. Uh, thank you for your honesty. Give me a minute. The curator spends a few minutes nutting something down in your paperwork. From time to time you catch him glancing at you. One more thing I need. According to Black Wing rules, you need to choose a call sign. You hear a quiet snort from somewhere nearby. Martin is smirking as well. Death Herald. Alright, Herald. Whatever you say. I'll pass it along to your commanding officer, Lieutenant Morheim. Kingsley carefully arranges the pages of your personnel file into a nice, square stack. Encased is full of post-apocalyptic sci-fi stories. Let's take a look at one more for today. A disheveled man in a dirty white coat slumps in a corner of the kitchen, growing a cigarette. He exhales the smoke with a long sigh. Beside him sits a huge case made of reinforced plastic. The white waves the smoke away, then leans over the case, puts his ear against it, and listens. The white-coated scientist sighs. He takes a moment to decide if he's going to indulge you. It's... it's hard to explain. He opens the case for you to look inside. Amongst folds of crimson velvet lies a porcelain white baby face. 
its eyes closed. At the head of a slender body, pale hands folded across its chest. The white inhales half his cigarette in one drag. The body in the box looks very much like a little girl, but antifreeze oozes blue from a crack on her temple, and beneath a missing flap of skin on her shoulder shines the chrome of a metal frame. She was playing in a lab when she fell off the balcony. Her name is Sophie. The warehouse won't give me a space, not allowed. He tries to hide the hope in his eyes and keep the desperation from his voice. Can you help me? You hold his gaze. His demeanor is calm, but in his eyes, he's begging you. You nod your understanding. No one knows why, but under the dome, pregnancy does not occur. There are no children here. Robo kids are all you get. This scenario, as is usually the case, can be resolved in many ways and we have several unique options to choose from, for good or bad. He reacts to your risky proposal with surprising enthusiasm. Let's do it! He scans the room. His gaze alights on the coffee maker. What guard would refuse a cup of coffee? While the warehouse door guard sips hot coffee, as a chain smoking wide regales him with a strange story about the Gauss gun, you slip up to the warehouse unnoticed. Practice makes perfect. The door clicks open. You slip into the warehouse unseen. You find a spot in the shadows and look around. On a neighboring aisles, you spot a shelf lined with a familiar looking cases. You open the first case you came to. A child's face stares blankly up at you. Reaching into the pocket in the wall of the case, you remove the multi-purpose repair kit. With a sonic screwdriver, a deft touch and a lot of luck, you remove the robo kid's head and one of her shoulder joints. With the body parts tucked in your uniform, you leave the warehouse the way you came in. In a booklet you find in the multi-purpose repair kit, an engineer with a pipe, a beard, and an endless supply of tanguerine Vega soda teaches you to repair a robo kid. With the disheveled scientist's help, you soon fix the damage to Sophie. Sophie opens her eyes. The wide gasps. Daddy? She looks up at him. Her mouth, my nail fiber eyelashes quiver. It's uncanny. Daddy, please. Don't hurt me anymore. The white drops his cigarette and hugs her to his chest. Tears come and he whispers over and over. Darling, of course not. Of course I won't, my darling. Turning to you, the white presses his fist to his chest. Thank you. I have nothing to give you. But now that I will not forget this. The scientist kisses the girl, then carefully loads her back into the case. He shakes her hand and leaves, limping with the weight of his huge suitcase. The RoboKid has been successfully repaired, though we learn some unsavory details about its owner. Let's see how this plays out with a Blackwing character. The crack on Sophie's temple doesn't look like a fall. It looks like a blow from a blunt implement. The white gives you his most innocent look, but he is blushing. What? I don't know what you mean. He shuts the case. I'm s I'm sorry I asked. Should have known better than to trust the black. You're all paranoid. He gathers his cigarettes and leaves, dragging the case behind him. As he reaches the door, he turns and yells. I am a scientist, goddammit! Rather unpleasant, your choice of wing will play a role not only in the prologue, but in the entire game, from start to finish. Despite Cronus's split into smaller factions, there are still many people who will judge you according to your background and interesting situations with unique choices will arise based on your past. 
This was the first video of a series detailing Encased RPG's gameplay. Stay tuned. In the next episode, we will talk about stats and other game systems.